All right. So we're going to look at some of the evidence for evolution. Um, let's take a look here. Homologous anatomical structures. You've heard this word before when we're talking about homologous chromosomes, which have a similar size and uh, similar shape, similar banding, because it has the same genes. Well, homologous anatomical structures is just referring to structures that exist between organisms that probably have a very, they have a very similar uh, structure. Look at the number here and uh, the number of fingers especially. And we're talking about bats, horses, hands, moles, and seal himself. Hey, seal, not swimming though. But uh, we're talking about, this is the pentadactyl limb, penta meaning five, pentadactyl limb. And they're very, very similar despite their different uses, used for flying, used for digging, used for high-fiving, uh, galloping, holding a microphone, basically. And the explanation is that they most likely evolved from a common ancestor. So the pentadactyl limb is a very famous example that's used to show that a lot of these living organisms were probably connected somehow. So here's a practice question. Try it out. Pause the video and then take a look right here. Which of the following represent homologous features? So pause if you don't want the answer to show up right now. And that's the best answer. Post the question online if, you're, if you have questions about that. Another example uh, or evidence for evolution is if you look at dogs, for example, you could talk about this a lot. I'm sure many of you have dogs and many of you have heard stories about dogs that have been bred for specific purposes. That's why you only see a specific type of dog being used in police canine units, for example. You don't see pugs being used as police dogs. Uh, bloodhounds are famous for their ability to track suspects based on their scents. Um, I don't know how to pronounce it. Dachund. I used to call it Dachshund, uh, have been bred for, I think, their ability to chase rabbits and actually dig into the holes to try to uh, murder, death, kill rabbits who are really annoying and eat crops, I guess. But the point is, is that humans have done this um, by selectively choosing which dogs to breed with each other because they like the particular traits they have. And uh, this still happens with a lot of different animals. And in uh, just a few centuries, we've, we've ended up with a bunch of very different um, looking dogs with different purposes. They can still interbreed. Some may choose not to interbreed. Maybe physically, just a really large dog and a really small dog, they won't be able to breed. But this is an example that's often cited um, to show that in a relatively short amount of time, you can have some pretty significant changes happening with organisms, and the dog is an example. Paleontology is study of fossils. Here's a famous uh, fossil. I think I can pronounce this like Akinthostiga or Akinthostiga is an example of a missing link. See, it has eight fingers and seven toes. That seems like a really weird pattern, right? But that's the thing about evolution and uh, mutations and new traits. These new traits don't come about because they're the best traits. They come about because they're random mutations. Most of the mutations, sorry, most of the mutations will end up killing the organism, but sometimes some of them will be an advantage. I told you about my art teacher who had a kid that had six fingers on each hand and six toes on each hand, but they ended up removing it because it's probably unnecessary. So this is a special missing link called the Akinthostiga. The existence of fossils like this uh, gives us more evidence for evolution. We don't see an animal like this that really exists anymore, but it probably existed at one point, and it maybe wasn't very attractive uh, to their female mates or something, and then they just didn't end up having a lot of kids, and so they don't really exist anymore. So that's an example of a transitional, transitional fossil. Finally, vestigial structures are things that are left around in our bodies and uh, in other organisms that don't really have a function anymore, like an appendix, for example. Many of you are going to grow up and you're going to have extra teeth growing in the back of your mouth that your mouth just doesn't have any space for. It's going to cost you a lot of money, a lot of pain, and you're going to have to get your wisdom teeth removed. You also have these sharp teeth in the front called canines, and canine teeth, some of you even don't have them. So these things are all kind of, we think they're left over from uh, our early human, early hominid evolution.
basically. The appendix, it's active in other animals because they have bacteria that help them to digest cellulose, but we can't even break that down, so it just ends up going, going through our system. We call it fiber, and it helps us to poop properly. Muscles to move ears. You might have some weird friends that can move their ears, but there really is no function for humans anymore. For dogs and other animals, they move their ears to help them hear better. Uh, hair left over on the body. Some really hairy people, some not so hairy people. Uh, that's kind of left over. No real function there. We talked about whales and these hind uh, limbs that are actually hidden inside the body. They don't have little legs, so why do they have little leg bones that are in there? Those are examples of vestigial structures. Finally, embryology. You can look at all these different embryos of different uh, organisms. They all kind of look kind of similar from uh, when they're you know, if you just compare them, I don't know if we can really tell the difference between a human and a chicken and a turtle and a salamander if like these labels weren't here. Humans actually even look like, uh, these fetuses even look like they have a little tail before, while they're developing and when they turn into uh, what looks closer to the form of a baby, that tail is no longer there. But there are some babies that are actually born with a mutation that actually produces a little tail. You can imagine how some families would have trouble accepting that. And if you do a Wikipedia search for this, there were some famous instances of children who were born with things that look like tails. And you can probably guess how they were labeled. They were labeled as devil kids and uh, brought to church to try and cast evil spirits from them. So that's some of this stuff about evidence for uh, evolution. We'll be looking at some specific examples next time. All right then.